The power of Earth observation interoperability is putting EO fusion capabilities into the hands of the decision-making client. To begin our client interoperability demonstration, I will introduce two important technologies used within the PIXIS client worldview. A discrete global grid system is a new tessellation-based Earth reference. Criteria for a discrete global grid include seamless global coverage, an equal area hierarchy of cells of common shape, with each cell representing a homogeneous value. The discrete global grid is a digital reference with properties associated with the best features of computing systems, storage, processing, transmission, discovery, visualization, aggregation, and transformations. A discrete global grid is data agnostic. It enables rapid integration of multiple data sets, regardless of scale, origin, spatial resolution, format, datum, projection, and temporality. In this demonstration, we show the integration of global Earth observations and interpretations from a variety of data source services, included web map services, web feature services, and the object of our OWS8 Earth observation thread demonstration, Web Coverage Services 2.0. The second important implementation is a pipeline processing architecture, the PIXIS Information Processing Engine, where geospatial data sources of all types can be sampled into the discrete global grid and through a series of chained processes combined and transformed into decision-making products. In the OWS8 EO Fusion demonstration, the pipe allows the client to control data processes, integration of data values, and remote processing. The WCS server at EOX provides the client with access to data from the European Space Agency's MARIS sensor. The five years of MARIS Global Vegetation Index will assist in our 2010 Amazon drought analysis. WCS data values are often packed in multiple channels. Data values across time, space, and frequency are encoded for delivery in the new WCS 2.0 and WCS EO specifications. Transforming values through stylization, statistical analysis, or by billing formulation between various channels can be done in the client or, as we will see later, as a remote process. The WCS at GMU holds a large quantity of NASA data. We are using the MODIS Normalized Difference Vegetation Index and the NASA JAXA Tropical Rainfall Measuring Mission, or TRIM, precipitation in the 2005 and 2010 analysis. These are the data sources used in the original NASA Ames study. We will use monthly averages of NDVI and TRIM for the 10-year averages and standard deviations calculated by the WPS and WCPS services in the Amazon drought analysis. But here you can see a stylized pipeline of daily TRIM values that naturally look like cloud distribution. And here is a MODIS NDVI request bounded by the Amazon drought study area. Once these data sources are brought into the discrete global grid, they are fully geosynchronized and integrated, fused, and ready for further processing. The Amazon drought analysis is orchestrated through a chain of web processing services and the new coverage processing language called Web Coverage Processing Services, located at 52 North and Jacobs University Razdaman. This is where the Amazon drought demonstration goes beyond mere interoperable access to multiple sources of Earth observation data. The client can call on the WPS and WCPS services to do the heavy lifting on the EO data. Worldview will access and run a chain of web processing services, WPS, and call on the remote operations within the new OGC WCPS. Here we are loading web processing services from 52 North and adding them to the local processes available in the pipe tools. These processes can be chained with other remote or local processes. 
New viewpoints are created to allow comparisons across various models of analysis. A custom process connecting worldview to 52 North for drought analysis was created for the demonstration and is included in the tools. The 2005 drought analysis using TRIM and MODIS is the first to be run and the results are shown here. The values indicate a range of standard deviations, the red values showing stress in vegetation, assumedly from the drought. The July 2005 MODIS data is integrated with the results of the analysis. The same analysis is requested by the client, replacing the data with 2010 values. The result is the 2010 drought. A quick comparison shows that our analysis did not detect much stress showing up in the 2005 data, but clearly some stress happening in 2010. NASA Ames has made available the results of the 2010 analysis through a GeoTIFF download. We can download and integrate the results into the grid. An analysis to detect the precipitation anomaly of 2010 is called on at Jacobs University in RAS Demand's WPS and WCPS implementations. It is supposed to indicate in white the affected drought area. I will let the audience judge the competence of our team to demonstrate interoperability and ask you not to look too closely at our environmental modeling capabilities. The client can also chain remote WPS processes. Here, we are running the 2010 drought analysis and using a WPS filter process at 52 North to classify intensity of vegetation stress. A new pipeline is created and saved. The single red values indicate the severest portion of the drought. We can compare this to the overall drought analysis. And finally, we ask the question, what if we replace the source of data from the NASA NDVI data at GMU to the ESA Maris MGVI from the EOX server? This is a simple operation, but the results show the power of interoperability. We can quickly confirm results and, with global coverage, show stress being experienced on vegetation earthwide in the summer of 2010.